pretty awesome there. So anyway, we were we were having a little feast <laughs> in the studio. So I'll, I'll show you what these things are. You went to Duncan, yeah, I guess. And this is like a shish kebab of donuts. Is that the deal? There it is. They call them munchkins on skewers, but I, I think, you know, they're Trinity, um, Trinity like skewers. Mm -hmm. And they three. shall be. So it is uh, So it is said, so it shall be. <laughs> yes. And it, and it was. Yeah. Hey, by the way, uh, I was looking for uh, tallest tennis players. We asked Patrick <laughs> okay. that question. Yeah. So you're not going to believe this. They have a thing, the top 10 tallest tennis players. There's two guys who are 6'11", right? Wow. Ivo Karlovich is 6'11", okay. and Riley Opelka is 6'11", and then the tallest female I could find was 6'3". But I, can you, how do you hit a, a lob over a 6'11 tennis player? Think about that for a second. My, uh, a lot my, of topspin. <laughs> my father was a state champion tennis player in New Hampshire, and he was 6'8". He was taller than me. He mm -hmm. could serve down. I mean, when you hit the point where you are serving down, it, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Well, you got leverage when you're 6'11". And you can step over the net when you win. You don't have yeah. to jump. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need no, to jump at that point. Uh, by the way, this is the birth date of uh, Charles Cunningham Boycott, from which the name Boycott comes. By the way, born this date, 1832. He was an English land agent whose ostracism by his local community in Ireland gave the English language the term boycott. Boycott, which is which is good considering what you were talking about about the Jefferson County Commission a little bit earlier and <laughs> boycotting them the meetings. not showing up for work. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sandy is here uh, twofold reasons. One, uh, Matt uh, mentioned that she's on the FCA board, so we mm -hmm. wanted to get into that a little bit. But I also want to ask you with your role of the school building authority because uh, Berkeley County did well in their request to the SBA this year. So we did come very, a little closer to your microphone too, if you don't mind. We did very well and we deserve to do well. Yes. Um, yeah, when, when I retired, the question came up, do you wanna remain on the school building authority? And uh, I said, do you have a representative from the Eastern Panhandle ready to come onto the board? And they said, no. And I said, then I stay. So, you know, we, we frequently, um, you know, and it's a great board and we have very limited funds we had over 325 million dollars in request within two days uh, we had superintendents every 15 minutes with those requests and we only had about 112 million that we could disperse out of that 325 million mm -hmm. and you know I i'm at the table in a very unique position because throughout the state particularly the southern part of the state they're consolidating schools right and we're experiencing so much growth, you know, we are the school building authority and building is happening in Berkeley County, Jefferson County, Morgan County. So um, I'm there to be our cheerleader. That's my main purpose of being on that board and education is critical to our state. And so, uh, you know, I remember uh, telling Superintendent Stevens, well, I have good news and bad news. And he said, okay, I said, well, you know, the good news is we got the 25 million we asked for. Bad news is you're not getting it a lump sum. We're going to get it over three years. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. And so, well, you know, our projects we're going to do in phases anyway, so I'm okay with that. But can we ask for more money over the next couple of years if we have another need? And I said, absolutely, you can. But can you back every year with a request? Yes. Yes. Is it likely that you could you would get it every year? I'm not going to speak for the whole authority. I'm one vote, but you know, we we uh, have a really good staff. And we've changed the way that uh, we've done it over the years since I've been on the School Building Authority, and I guess I've been on maybe six, seven years now. Initially, we had very long meetings with board members, and we, we went over all the requests, and it was very tedious and very lengthy, and we weren't always familiar with all the projects that came before us. And I think it was three or four years ago, uh, we, we worked out a process where we uh, have the staff visit each of the sites and look over the request and make recommendations to us. Mm -hmm. Now we can, you know, either accept all the recommendations, accept part of them. You know, we still have that flexibility as a board, but it's very helpful to have the experts out there telling you, this is what we saw, you know, and they rank them. And if you're below the line, we can bring other projects up or we can find some creative ways to try to help. But uh, that's really streamlined the process and I think made it more effective because they know, they're architects, and they're required to be at each site and to see what the need is. So, so that's been very helpful and a change in recent years that I think has been to the benefit every, of everyone. So, 
you know, when they come to Berkeley, Jefferson, Morgan County, um, they see what the need is. And uh, yeah. I'm very, very grateful to Governor Justice for, uh, you know, being at our last uh, school building authority meeting and allocating those funds uh, throughout the state, 112 million total. So. When does the first tranche of uh, the three payments of the 25 million come to Berkeley uh, County, or, or whichever county uh, it's going to? Well, I'm not going to have that exact date because we're going to see where the first phase is, and you know, it, that goes through our financial people. Although mm -hmm. I do chair the finance committee, <laughs> how convenient! <laughs> yeah. And I'm also on the personnel committee. So, well. Yes. Yeah, so, um, is it within the year? Uh, it could be potentially if it's could needed be. within the year. Okay. Yeah. How many How many members are there in the the school building authority? Uh, I think we're ten or twelve strong, maybe. Uh, we definitely need a an Eastern Panhandle. Yeah. That was that yeah, was great. They're all wonderful set. people, but you know, I said the fastest growing school system in the state, and we don't. Not that they don't understand, but to have somebody actually around the table that can tell them exactly you know, how things are here and how different they are. So well, the rest of the state just as always needs to understand that if they don't take care of the Eastern Panhandle and we don't have the room for growth, mm -hmm. the tax base of West Virginia doesn't grow as we prop up the, the counties on the other end of the state that need help. Yeah. You mentioned as well superintendents about every 15 minutes rolling through. Mm -hmm. how, how big are those presentations? How much can you kind of tell that a, a, a particular uh, school board and 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 so forth is ready for this project or that they're that, that hopeful but not quite ready uh, it varies mm. it varies and, and certainly there's different levels of skills with presenters mm -hmm. uh, but but we look at you know what the facts are and mm -hmm. what the staff recommends you know I'm gonna give a shout out to Berkeley County Schools and that um, you know the bottom line for me is it's about the kids uh, totally, you know. Um, so, Berkeley County Schools, you know, we we certainly have one of the, the longest trips. So, mm -hmm. Superintendent Stevens was there and did a very nice presentation. But the, at the end of the presentation, he gave us coasters, and um, you know, just a, a cardboard coaster. And on the front of the coaster, it was the insignia of Berkeley County Schools. And I apologize if I'm not supposed to tell this, Ron, but I don't care. I like this a lot. Mm -hmm. So on the top of the coaster was the insignia of Berkeley County Schools. But when you turned it over, there was a handwritten message from a student in Berkeley County thanking the school building authority for supporting them with their name. I got mm -hmm. Roy. I don't know where <laughs> Roy goes to school. But, you know, that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So you bring you make sure the kids are in the equation. It's not about having something fancy or nice. It's just taking care of our kids. Uh, before you go, Matt, I got a text from Delegate Paul Espinosa who said the legislature approved a $150 million supplemental appropriation to fully fund all pending SBA grant applications. Thank you, Paul. Did you know that before you heard that? I did not know that before I heard that. That's wonderful news. That's, that could uh, explain why I had a meeting that's been canceled and moved up because maybe we were waiting to get that information after, news, after the session. Mean. That's wonderful news. Thank you. And and certainly he's been a proponent of education. Former education chair. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, Matt, the real reason why Sandy was invited here. <laughs> it was the donuts. The donuts. It never comes empty-handed. This is a lot better than the poison ivy cream that I got. Uh, <laughs> but not as needed. Oh, that right, was needed. Right, Let right. me tell you, brother. That was needed. That was a miserable month. And that cream worked? Oh, it did. It did. You know, I have to throw something in real quick before yeah. we go to the real reason I'm supposed to be here. Because you mentioned birthdays. Mm -hmm. I actually happen to have five friends and wonderful community members whose birthdays are today. And oh, you probably know yeah. some of them. Yeah. Megan Michael, yeah. Blue Ridge Community Technical College. Uh -huh. Amy Orndolph's birthday uh -huh. today, Senior Center. I think she's on next week. Well, don't forget to have a belated gift or something. I'll, I'll save some skewers for her. <laughs> well, the Trinity, the, they might be a little dry, but the stick will still be good. <laughs> Not my problem. I'm giving it away. <laughs> Darlene Bartles, uh, City of Martinsburg resident, longtime friend, and then two dear friends who were honorary mayor, mayors years a few years back at South Berkeley, uh, Carla and Charlie Hopkins' birthdays are today. So it's a great day for birthdays and great people. March 12, happy birthday. i got to add my son in there as well. Brandon's oh. birthday is today. Oh, wow, that's Brandon. awesome. Happy birthday, Brandon. 26? 26. 26. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That went fast. <laughs> it did. Yeah, my youngest son is also 26. Yeah. I think I remember being in the press box one Little League summer with you. 
Yeah. Oh, you guys are getting ready to go get wow. Brandon. Yeah. That's amazing how fast that went. Yep. And 2001. Yeah. Right? It's like, <laughs> what? Yep. So, yeah. Now, oh, so the, and now on to the FCA. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, it's a busy time uh, for us. A uh, golf tournament coming up in May. And then uh, in June, we've got a pair of camps. Uh, one's a sports camp. That is the first week of June. It'll be at Spring Mills High School. We use the DuPont soccer fields there as well. Um, we're offering a, a whole slew of different sports uh, this year, including we've added uh, track and dance and cheer, along with basketball, soccer, football, and lacrosse. And so open to boys and girls ages 8 to 13. And, uh, and then two weeks later, um, the 18th through the 21st of June, will be our second annual outdoors camp. And uh, that was a popular camp last year we had 66 campers a year ago and um, basically each day you'll get a chance to rotate through four stations uh, the first uh, or depending on where you start each day uh, could be the uh, 22 rifle range uh, the archery range the fishing pond or the camping hiking station and so uh, we're looking forward to doing that again that's at the Back Creek Valley Bow and Gun Club shout out to them uh, thanks to Bill Clark and uh, all the folks there that uh, were so supportive last year and the camp went well and they said hey come back and do it again and Very we're nice. excited to is brad no going to be that. there uh, i don't know brad you're welcome uh, on, you brad. Know, just reach <laughs> out uh, Go to our website, epwvfca.org. Um, you'll see uh, across the top of the page a uh, place where you can click events, and then under events you'll read camps or you'll read golf tournament, and you can click and find out all the information of how you could participate in any one of those. Also on the very front page you will see a missions trip to Belize, or excuse me, to Brazil, and um, that is something that we're looking to do. We've got uh, right now a definite seven, possibly eight, and possibly even nine that'll uh, be looking to take a trip to uh, work with some sports ministries in Manaus, Brazil, and that'll be July 12th through the 21st, so about a nine-day uh, trip, and uh, we're looking for fundraising for that as well, as each person involved is going to be raising funds for that mission trip. It sounds like it would be hot in South America in July, is it? Well, I, I, I'm glad you asked, because uh, <laughs> pa Pastor Tom Turley is out at Independent Bible Church, and he's really helped to set this up, and it's actually through a contact of, of his, uh, Wendell, who runs a sports ministry there in Manaus, that this all came about. And when I asked Pastor Tom, what do I expect in July in Brazil? He said, well, it's a good time to go because it's actually more of the winter months. It's the rainy season. So he said, if you went any other time, it would be 98 degrees with 89% humidity. But when you're going, it'll be 89 degrees with 98% humidity, so it'll be great. <laughs> you know, one of those options sounds particularly appealing. Thank you, Tom. So uh, it's the rainy season, so humidity goes up, but it's winter, so the temperature drops a little bit. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, well, very nice. It sounds like it'll be fun. He said the good news is air conditioning in uh, just about every building. So I said as long as I can sleep comfortably in some air conditioning, I can sweat all day. He said the good news is air conditioning in every building. Bad news is you'll never be in a building. <laughs> You're gonna, it's, it's winter down there. You're going to have to bring the insulated shorts. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I may not need them even for winter there. But, uh, but yeah, we're looking to uh, pr uh, probably do some basketball and soccer. And then uh, we've got uh, a, a gentleman that's going, a good friend of mine, who has been into jiu-jitsu. And, uh, of course, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is what he has studied. And so um, he'll be participating in that. I think the rest of us will watch. Um, and then uh, also one of, the, uh, uh, one of our FCA reps, uh, who is a Brazilian. His name is Paulo Wesher. We're working with him. Paulo has actually been teaching American football in Brazil. So uh, we may be doing a little bit of that as well, it looks like. You don't want to play soccer with a Brazilian. No. <laughs> no. Don't. No. Well, these will be kids, so they'll still take it to us, but not quite as bad as the adults, I'm sure. So It may be worse because the adults would take it easy on you. The kids will try to destroy you because you are an adult. Sandy, how long have you been on the board with FCA? Uh, a little over a year now, a yeah. year and a half, yeah. yeah what, it, what drew you to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Um, an exceptional person in uh, our community that's also a valued friend, Trent Sherman, mm -hmm. um, talked with me. It was one of those conversations, since you're retired, <laughs> uh -oh. um, I'd like to talk with you about something I think you'd be interested in. And I guess, you know, the one of the compliments to me, uh, aside from a friend talking to me, was that 
uh, he recognized uh, my faith. And because he recognized my faith, uh, and we, we happen to belong to the same church, Grace Church on mm -hmm. um, Novak Drive. But Trent said, um, I really think you would be interested in this organization. You've had a, a pretty extensive history with with your kids and now grandkids with sports. And, and you certainly uh, you have a walk with our Lord. And I'd just like you to think about coming onto our board. So I thought about it and uh, <laughs> thought about it a little more. And I thought, yeah, I'm supposed to do this. Um, and it certainly uh, made the decision easy with Matt in the position as the director because, um, you know, Matt's character is above reproach and he's he's exactly where he's supposed to be and he's an incredible leader. Uh, if anything, I've got to sometimes hold him back and keep him from overdoing because we do have some staff now and yeah. he can let go of some things. But I think he's just so used to go, 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 go that sometimes he forgets. And I remind him at a board <laughs> yeah. meeting, you know, you don't need to do that. We have an admin now. And yeah. um, but it. Um, yeah, that's why. So thank you, Trent. I tease him, give him a hard time sometimes at events that. You know, he was the chair, and then he invited me, and now he's the past chair, and I'm the chair. <laughs> um, but that's okay. That's worked okay. out. Worked out well for him. <laughs> he, he recruited his replacement. So. So I'm pretty yeah. new to the board trench. Should I be doing? Well, yeah, but you're not new to boards, he said. Yeah. <laughs> Which I couldn't really argue that. How many others are you on? I've cut back. You know, it was 23 when I was working full time, so I'm on 13 now. You have cut back, but 13 still an extraordinary <laughs> it number. Is. It is. As my terms expire, I'm letting some of them expire and not renewing. But um, Board positions accumulate, and you get like board creep if it's not, you're not careful. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're on 23 boards. Right. It all started well, with one. It's all important stuff, though. Sure. You know? mm -hmm. There's still yeah. there's so much good in our community, and there's so many ways you can make an impact and do things that matter. That. Mm -hmm. I remember when my boys were young, I held up my hand to be uh, a timekeeper during one of their soccer matches when they were like five. And six years later, I was running the entire league with 1,200 kids, 3,000 parents, and mm -hmm. quarter million dollar budget. And I'm like, how did I get here from being a timekeeper? I volunteered to be a timekeeper six years ago. How did this happen? That's what you get for now. The Roger yeah. Goodell of Frederick Soccer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He made $37 million a year. And I, you made nothing. I paid, 30, <laughs> I paid $37 per child to play. <laughs> <laughs> There's a synchronicity there somewhere along the way, too. Uh, where, where does uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes go in regards to moving forward and progressing, Matt, Sandy? Well, the, the good news is, as, as Sandy just mentioned, um, uh, growing the ministry by being able to grow those that are involved. First of all, we, we can't do this without hundreds of volunteers, um, teachers, coaches, um, you know, moms and dads that are a part of our, our Bible studies that are in our schools as, as we have FCA clubs in right now 11 of a possible 23 schools in our four counties of Berkeley, Morgan, Jefferson, and Hampshire. Uh, we're hopefully ready.